DS 106 uh, headless 13 I am Rochelle Lockridge and I'm here today with Christina Hendricks we volunteered for week four to be the helpers and one of the things we wanted to do was to broadcast out what some of the work that has been done this week and so why don't you introduce yourself Christina hello I'm Christina Hendricks <laughs> Um, yes, I, I've agreed to be one of the volunteers for this week because, well, I started DS-106 in, when was it, May? April? I don't remember, but uh, Rochelle and I did the DS-106 zone in, earlier in the summer, and I found that I absolutely loved the audio portion. That was my favorite part. So I thought I'd, I'd volunteer to help with the audio weeks this time. Thanks. And we've both been working hard trying to put stuff together. Um, there's a lot of pre-work that goes on <laughs> and to put things in order to make it go a little bit smoother for us. Um, and we've also decided that instead of putting up everything that, we, that we've heard, to kind of give examples of stuff, one from each person that we were able to find. It was, it's helpful for us uh, if you tweet things out and if you put them on Google Plus so that we can find them. The other thing is for your sound to make it be downloadable and you have to go to a special place to do that to make it downloadable and also to switch uh, if you if it's okay for Creative Commons or what your license is for us. Yeah sometimes they have no license on on the sound and then I don't want to use the sound unless I ask because if there's no license I mean technically it's actually copyrighted right so so it's, it's nicer if you can actually be clear about what the license is. Thank you. So we're going to start with uh, the radio bumpers that people did. I know that they used a couple of different programs. There was Audacity and GarageBand that were used. I didn't hear any others. Did you hear any? Nope. Okay. Nope. So you want to talk about our first one is John Johnston. I'm going to play that here. DS-106. So do you want to go ahead and talk about that a little bit, Christina? Yeah, so one of the things I really loved about this is, is John said in his blog post that, and we'll, we'll be providing the links to all these posts in our blog post about this, he said that in his previous bumpers, he had always used music that was already recorded and he just downloaded it um, as long as it was you know, available to do so. And this time he actually wanted to make his own music. And I had never thought about doing that. And the fact is, I have a Mac, I've always had Macs, and I know that GarageBand exists, but I had no idea what it was really or what it did. And so I was really excited to learn that you could actually make your own music. Like, in fact, that's probably what it's really for, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I, I, I tried to get in to do making your own music on there, and I wasn't very good at doing it. So <laughs> so I just thought that was really interesting how, you know, you can if you have GarageBand. Um, it, it looked pretty easy to do he, the way he described it. Um, so that, I thought that was very interesting. I also really liked how he said DS-106 open for anything but business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, I mean, in parts, he said, I think in his blog post, that it's it's open for play, 
Um, mm -hmm. And also, most of us are not terribly interested in making money necessarily from what we're doing on this. So. Mm -hmm. And you also said that you like the announcement part, part of the, the brass and... Oh yeah, he um, he himself said that he, he likes the way the brass came in. It sounds like it's announcing something, right? And for, so right at the very, very beginning it goes da 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 da, da mm -hmm. which does make it sound like, listen, right, here's something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really wakes you up. GarageBand offers you a whole bunch, and I do use these, GarageBand offers you a whole bunch of different little clips that you can use. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're longer pieces, sometimes, you know, like the news, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and, and you can put all kinds of different, and they actually have some sound effects on there okay. yeah, that you I can use. That. Mm -hmm. However, I have found that often when I put some of the pieces of music on a video of mine, YouTube flags it as being copyrighted material and I have to go through hoops to be able to say I got this from GarageBand and I'm thinking that they may have people have used GarageBand to make music and then that's what it's their auto bot whatever their bot is is finding that oh, and see. so it's be ready for that <laughs> well I, I don't know if SoundCloud checks that sort of thing like YouTube does and takes things down. I mean, so far, nobody's stuff has been taken down from SoundCloud that they made with GarageBand. That's true. Yeah. So I and, I, and I don't have things taken down. I just have mm -hmm. to go through the process of telling them where I got it, that uh -huh. it's not copyrighted. And uh -huh. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Our next, uh, we have a bumper from Mariana. So let me go ahead and play this. And this is, oh, this is our audio jiffing, which I thought was very interesting. This is DS106, Shrinking the Big Questions. This is DS106, Shrinking the Big Questions. So um, I was trying to figure out if I would have guessed which movie some of that audio is from without having read the blog post. And I, I'd like to think that I would. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I would not. Even though I really like that movie, I did not remember <laughs> that particular line. <laughs> well, it's the sound. It's... It's the sound of how the computer in 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's just this sort of bzzz kind of going all the way through. And then Dave is breathing into his helmet. And it just that's just such a typical sound of that film. What she was doing with this uh, bumper, well, first of all, just to explain what it's a bumper for, it's a bumper for a radio show that she wants to do called uh, Shrinking the Big Questions with Talking Tina. Oh, so she, I didn't know that, that it was with yeah. Talkie Tina. Well, that's what she's hoping. So oh. I will put the, the link to the blog post where she talks about that particular radio program that she wants to do with Talkie mm -hmm. Tina. I'll put that onto our blog post. Um, so she's basically calling out Talkie Tina. So do you want to do this radio show with me? And I, I don't know if Talkie Tina has replied or not. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, Mariana wants to, I think, if I remember correctly, do some kind of late night um, psychology uh, broadcast that has to do with DS-106. So, so being the DS-106 had the shrink, uh, shrinking the big questions. So that's, that's what this bumper is for. But what was really interesting to me besides that is that she was trying to make an audio GIF or GIF. I know people say it differently. The, the creator of the, of it said it can be either one, but he had meant it to be GIF. I but see. it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> so, I, and I thought about that a lot. I thought, well, what would it mean to make an audio GIF? Because that's how I say it. Um, and of course, you know, when you do an animated one, it loops forever, right? Well, that's usually how it works. And you try to distill the essence of some scene uh, to, to bring out a certain feeling or a certain idea. 
in a very small way. And so I felt like she actually did that here, even without looping it forever. What she did is she put uh, a repeated section at the beginning and at the end, which makes it feel in a way like a loop, right? Because if you played it in your mind, it would, it would keep going because it's the same thing at the beginning at the end. And then in the middle, she, she's distilling this feeling in the movie of how the computer slowly dying because he sings this song and it gets slower and slower. Although I think he's actually singing a different song in the movie than it is here, but I could be wrong about that. I'm not sure. Um, and she was tying that into uh, an article by Nicholas Carr in, in The Atlantic in 2008 called, Is Google Making Us Stupid? That, which I haven't read in a long time, but um, her blog post said it, it has to do with how not having to hold information in our head can change our cognitive processes, and that in a way we might actually be slowly dying, like how. So I just thought there were many things about that one that I really liked. Oh, oh um, one of the other points was in her blog post where she had talked about she was going to make a GIF. Oh, yeah. She was actually a going to make it, one. yeah, yeah. A video one, but she couldn't, she couldn't figure it out how it would work, and then she realized it was more auditory than yeah. it was visual. That's right. The power in that scene is more what you hear than what you see, and I had never thought about that before while thinking about that scene, and I thought that was just such a great observation to make. There is something that is different about audio. I know when I first started working with it this summer that um, listening and telling a story through audio is different, how you listen to it. And if you've been listening to the, the way that um, the different links that we have in this week's assignment, you get a chance to hear that, the layering, the way uh, paragraphs are put together in sound. There is a there is a difference, and mm -hmm. I like thinking about it. How how is sound better here, or how is visual better here? Uh, is an effect better than uh, spoken word? The the power of putting all those things together. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's one of the things that we're trying to get people to think about this week is is really listening. So that's why uh, this podcast is great, because we're trying to really listen to what people are doing and why and the stories they're trying to tell. So we're trying to do that ourselves. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Let's go on to we have a radio bumper from Mikhail. The trouble, Wally, with always being active and doing things is that I think it's quite possible to do all sorts of things and at the same time be completely dead inside. I mean, you're doing all these things, but are you doing them because you really feel an impulse to do them? Or are you doing them mechanically, as we were saying before? Because I really do believe that if you're just living mechanically, then you have to change your life, 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 life. As well as such readings, we run the open, run the open, run the open. So that one I felt, um, this one uh, is the kind of genre of bumper that I've done myself and that I, I usually think about when doing a bumper, but I think he's done it really, really well. So what I've done in the past is I've taken a clip from some other say a, a movie or a television program and then you know tie that in somehow to DS-106 radio and of course say that at the end or at the beginning. Um, but what I really like about this one is that he's, he's not only combined music and uh, uh, words in a really nice way and it sounds extremely well put together but um, the words are really interesting as well. There's something you know really nice thing to think about and it may not have anything to do necessarily with what the person is playing on DS106 radio at the time, but it's <laughs> but it's really a, a thoughtful and thought-provoking um, thing to, to think about. And then at, at the end of the dialogue, he repeats the word life, 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 life. <laughs> which of course really fits with DS106 being for life, right? Yes, I've, um, I've seen the unseen pound for life, hashtag for life, hashtag exactly. for life. <laughs> and then at the end, I. I'm still not quite sure what it means to say, run the open, run the open, run the open. But uh, I, I really just thought it was, again, very thought provoking. Like, how do you run the open? <laughs> and maybe that's what he was trying to say about the, the open course and yeah. that, that, you know, run the open and that, that that's where we're at right now. We're running an open course. And how do, you, how, do you, how do you run an open course? 
<laughs> <laughs> and it's actually, he's using the end of a track from uh, an album called Run the Jewels oh. by Killer Mike mm-hmm. and LP. Um, he's got that on his blog post. So that's partly, probably partly where that came from, but then he changed it to Run the Open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course, this is a very open course in numerous ways. And one of the great things about DS-106, besides the fact that anybody can join at any time, um, is that the assignments are created by people who are taking the course. And then um, they they actually do most of the work with each other themselves, right? Mm-hmm. So most of the learning is from each other. But then, of course, also what we're doing this this term is is really interesting. I've never heard of this before quite in this way, where you just throw it out and say, look, we've got these blog posts ready um, to, to run another course. Nobody's going to be in particular in charge, but hey, you want to run a week? You know, and people just sign up, maybe at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> or not. I think we even have a couple weeks that don't have people still. I'm not sure about that. I, I, I think saying. still, last time I looked, um, week seven and eight for the, the radio stuff, I think some of those, maybe it's week eight, because I know I couldn't weeks. do week eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it'll still work, you know, because we will run the course ourselves, even just those of us doing it. You know, we will comment on each other's works. We will tweet about it and, and uh, cheerlead and all that stuff. So, anyway, that's, those are some things that were brought up from me for this one. The next one we have is from Sally Wilson. You are listening to DS106 Radio. Spark your dreams with programming by the people. DS106 Radio. Nice and short and succinct, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what really struck me about this one, because I've made just one bumper in the past, but I'm thinking about doing another one. And my last one was, I think, a minute long, um, which is quite long. Most people's are around 30 seconds, which is a nice, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's nice being shorter. But this one was even shorter, and I felt like it was still very effective. I liked how, if I were playing things on the radio, I could just throw this in between songs, and it wouldn't really break up the flow that much, mm-hmm. but it would tell people what they're listening to. Right? Of course, I guess with CS106 radio, you know what you're listening to, <laughs> as opposed to if you're in your car and you're just slipping between stations and you're not sure which one you're on. <laughs> that's that. I never thought about that. I never yeah, thought about that. It could, I may not know what particular program I'm listening to or where it's right. coming from because it's an open station for us, yeah. but I didn't think about that, yeah. Well, when I used to work in college radio, we were required by the FCC in the U.S., the Federal Communications Commission, to say, um, I think, our official call letters and the city we were in at the top of every hour. Mm-hmm. So within five minutes of the top of every hour, you had to say that. And mm-hmm. it was something you know to do with letting people know what they were actually listening to and I'm not sure why else. <laughs> but, and so that's partly where this whole idea of a bumper comes in, because you could do it in a bumper. You could just say it as a DJ, or you could do it in a bumper. And in a way, you don't really quite need that with DS106 Radio, because you have to tune in specifically to it. Um, but it's still a, a fun thing to do. So anyway, I also really liked her, um, John Johnston commented on this on her blog too, that, that she talks about radio by the people. Spark yes. Is. Spark Your Imagination, I think it was, with Radio by the People. And that really captures the essence of DS-106 Radio. Hopefully, um, those of you who are listening to this now have listened to DS-106 Radio. Part of our assignments were to at least listen to an hour of it this week. And I I hadn't listened to it. I just kind of got in before just a little bit. And over the last couple of weeks, I've now been listening some. And... I love it. I never know who's going to be popping in. Um, one percent yellow had. Uh, she's the one who is um, with her. Uh, the native people, um, indigenous. Yeah, she's got people. a class. Yeah, that she's yeah. doing. And she holds holds it on there. Yeah, I know. So it's it's amazing. I when I heard of DS one hundred and six radio, I thought, well, what would I do on it? You know, do you just play music? But which you can, and that's great, and people love it. Um, but there's all kinds of things you can do. People go to, to live performances and and uh, you know broadcast those. They'll they'll do their classes. Um, I think I think Brian Jackson may have um, put out broadcast one of his philosophy class discussions on there, if not more than one. Um, you know you can just walk around town and talk 
and broadcast. I mean, there's just all kinds of things you could do. If you were interested in doing that, we did a broadcast, a Google Hangout, and recorded it about broadcasting on DS-106. That right. Christina organized everybody, and that was on Tuesday of this week. God, mm-hmm. man. It's so, so long ago. It does. <laughs> and it's been posted, so we'll make sure that a link to that is here also. Where I am also going to work on getting people to clean up the DS-106, how to, how to broadcast um, document that's on Google Docs, because right now it's a bit of a mess, and there is some stuff that isn't true anymore, and there's some stuff that, that is interesting, but it's more archival, you know, that, that you know, maybe we want to keep somewhere, but not on the how to broadcast document. So I'm going to work on that, but it won't be done <laughs> right away. That sounds really good. I set, I'm going to get people to help. Good. I, I worked this week to set myself up so that I could broadcast, mm-hmm. and I had my first on-air experience yesterday. It was it was a success. I, I did actually make it through. Fantastic. And the um, it is hard to piece all the, all the things together to be able to make it. So I think that we can now condense some things so that it's pretty easy with screenshots with some stuff because once I got it it's like oh that's what it is but getting there was pretty convoluted Mm -hmm. yeah so I mean the more people if people have blog posts that already have screenshots that'd be fantastic to collect there are a few on that document Um, if we want to you know make one of those be a big part of that document like here's a really easy way to do it Here's how Rochelle did it, and she's got these fantastic screenshots, (laughs) for example. For example, yes. (laughs) So let's end out the radio bumper section with uh, Kathleen Nardi. And we are very sorry if we happen to mispronounce names. Uh, One of the things about being online is some of you we haven't talked to, and we don't know how to pronounce your name. Maybe that should be a part of um, something when you start out is that you have to record you saying hello and say your name. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that would be, has to be on your blog post. Okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and play Kathleen's here. It's called Uncork at the Cellar. Time to uncork at the cellar here on Diaz 106 Radio. So this is actually the this is actually the first time I've heard that one. Well, no, I listened to it right before we did the broadcast because I didn't find it last night when I was looking for for um, bumpers. But I like how she uh, she connects the the music, the cellar door, to uncorking, and then I guess uh, uncorking the the radio, I suppose. Open, excuse me, opening it up. Mm-hmm. The the effect that she had on where it was echoing, I didn't yeah. know if it had recorded as funny or if it was for a reason um, that it was there. And I'd like mm-hmm. to know more about that in her process about how it was that she and why she chose to do it that way. Yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting. Right, because I didn't see a blog post for this one yet. Because right. sometimes we'll finish things and then we'll, it'll take us a couple of days to blog them because that mm-hmm. takes a while. So, so I'm not sure exactly, um, you know, what was the thinking behind that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just one, one small suggestion on this one. It was a little soft, the, the volume, so I had to turn it up. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, just something to think about if you can amplify uh, your, your uh, sounds. Yeah, and and what what do you normally look for when you're amplifying? Like, how, what's the the level that you try to get to? When I'm doing something, I'm watching the the level meter, and mm-hmm. you don't want it to stay in the red. You want it to be at about like what would be your yellow or your orange zone. That that's mm-hmm. where where the peak would be at. So you want to watch it. And one of the tricks in GarageBand, sometimes I'll have something that's really low if I'm recording. Um, if I have a sound effect or something, an outside sound effect. And a trick that I learned was to double the track. Hmm. And that will give you a nice sound. But you have to be careful that whatever you're doing, it's lined up exactly hmm. right. I've never heard of that before. Mm-hmm. It works well. On Audacity, what I do is I select the whole track, and then I go to Effects, Amplify. 
mm-hmm. and then you can choose. There's numbers there, and you can choose how how much to do mm-hmm. it. And frankly, I just kind of play around with that until I see that it's not in the red, but it's you know, it's pretty high and getting close to the red, but hasn't hit that yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other way to think about it, I think, in Audacity, is that you can get it so that the peak is at zero, I believe, um, and I try to get it fairly close to that. So, um, so it'll you know it'll be like one or two, maybe or negative one or two. Oh, geez, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've actually <laughs> done anything in audio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the GarageBand can go plus or minus six mm-hmm. of whatever their particular thing is, and you can adjust it individually. If it's not working, it's not enough to boost the sound. Then I just double my layers, yeah. and in the my sound effect story which is actually an audio story that I just did about uh, this summer at an island I had to do that to get the mosquitoes to come through okay. and okay. and the birds and the rustling weave leaves and it, I'm sure that there are things in the recording when you first record it if you have all the right equipment but all I had was my iPhone yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then sometimes if you amplify your sound, it uh, you'll amplify all the ambient noise yeah. and, you know, all the hissing and the you know, nastiness. So I guess that would be really interesting to just double it. Maybe you wouldn't have that problem. You don't have the problem as much when you do that. And there yeah. are, again, probably other effects. I'm using GarageBand 9. Mm-hmm. A GarageBand 11 might give you something else. And, of mm-hmm. course, there's really good software out there where it, you put a filter on it and it yeah. takes that that sound out and GarageBand might also mm. if there are other people who are using GarageBand be interested to hear how they might address some of those things yeah in audacity there is a noise removal effect mm-hmm. so you can select a section that has just that noise mm-hmm. and no other noise and then use noise removal and it'll it'll cut that out from the whole track which is quite nice all right, well, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And I have that we're moving on to the sound effect stories. Is mm-hmm. that right? Or did you want to yep. do... Okay, so we're doing the A Life in Draft by Kevin Hodgson a little bit later, right? Yes. All right. I probably didn't update this one document, right? <laughs> All right, so one of the things, and I just talked about the sound effect story that I had done. Um, we'll... All, uh, Ari. And yes. And... We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my God. So the assignment was for us to take different sound effects and to make a story, and it's supposed to be in 90 seconds, right? Mm-hmm. It's a 90-second mm-hmm. story. Yeah, uh, which this one is, I believe, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I really thought this one was effective. Um, it's called Invasion, and you can kind of get that feeling. It starts off with this uh, very ominous sort of piece of music, and then um, just goes into very chaotic noises that really give you a sense of... Um, something very bad happening (laughs) and something very bad happening to the radio stations to the telephones then there's sirens and a helicopter and all throughout there's these weird like noises which kind of gives you a sense that something is messing around with all the communications perhaps or electricity 
and it did give me a, a feeling of, of, I don't know, just a sense that maybe if some aliens came along and took over, that there would just be this chaos of noise and electronics and things stopping working. And then the ending, I like the ending too. So there's, there's this really kind of cacophonous bunch of noises, electronic voices and, and other noises kind of coming all at once and then just silence. Because to me that felt like they've taken over and everything's over for us, like we're just all dead. So, so do you think that the silence is a, is a, there was a purposeful part of it or, or part do. of her editing? But I honestly don't know. You know, that's kind of one of the fun things about these is that um, you just, you can make your own meanings. Right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it felt like, yeah, I mean, I don't know how long the silence should last really, but it just ends really abruptly. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Humanity is over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that's what she meant, but that's what I got from it. <laughs> The, um, we'll have to ask her. Yeah. <laughs> so Ari, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that was really interesting for me about um, this particular sound effects story was that I asked her on her blog, so where did you get the sound effects? Because I always like to find out where people get their sounds. I mean, I think I know where most of the sources of sounds are on the internet, but I'm finding new ones every day. And um, she said, oh, I got them from GarageBand. And I thought, wow. Again, I learned something about GarageBand. I, I've been ignoring it for so many years, and it's got sound effects. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. <laughs> I'm, Audacity, I'm sure, is much more powerful in Maybe. a lot of things. Uh, I don't. Yeah, possibly if you add in some plugins and things like that. Um, but really, it's just an editor for mm -hmm. the most part. Like you have to bring the sounds in. There may be one or two really small things you can do mm. within it with sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, it does have effects that you can add to your sounds, but but you've got to bring stuff in from the outside. So I didn't know that you didn't have to do that with GarageBand. So I just thought, well, where are these sounds coming from? Well, they're not coming from anywhere but GarageBand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I learned. I learned something. And now we have what we both thought was a nice, fun one from Dave Barr, The Banana Peel. Let me go ahead and play this. <laughs> that is just that is so funny and i i hear more stuff each time that i listen to it mm -hmm. there are a lot of sounds in there <laughs> that must have taken a long time to put together i i'm thinking because i mean how many well maybe all of the falling sounds so that fall lasts for like 30 seconds <laughs> it's, just, it's so long <laughs> it's quite a fall <laughs> and maybe that's all just you know, one sound, but it could be several sounds that he put together. Mm -hmm. And then he's got the music, he's got the siren, he's got the birds tweeting, he's got his own voice, he's got the slide whistle. That's a lot of, that's a lot of sounds. It must have taken a while to put together. When I read his post, he said something about the, the slide whistle, that mm -hmm. he had to lengthen it or do something with it so that it fit how he wanted it to go. Yeah, that's right. And then did you read the part where he said he couldn't get a good squishy banana peel sound? <laughs> so he used his own oral equipment? Yes. <laughs> that, was, that was very, I, I, I love the vocabulary here. I know. That, was, that was just added to it. And his use of the birds tweeting around his head, mm -hmm. that, that, that was, that's something out of the, what you see in the old cartoons. You know, mm -hmm. the Bugs Bunny cartoons, the Looney Tunes. Yes. That was ingenious. Yeah. I thought so, too. Um, very nice. Because I've never, 
never thought about putting that image into audio. No. But it totally works in audio because if you if you know if you remember, you know, those or are still seeing them, those kind of cartoons, it immediately evokes that. Right. So that well, worked. That makes me think about and I think MIMS is the right word, where you have to um, where you see something and you understand it and and what it is just by what the picture is, you know, a little thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if, is, if MIM is the right word, but the same thing could be in audio that you have to know that this particular sound means something, yeah. that it has yeah. some some reference. Because another culture who hadn't seen cartoons like that we have wouldn't know the birds tweeting around your head. Exactly. Yeah, so it, I'm sure it is a cultural reference that some people are not going to get, right? Mm-hmm. And that is just what happens sometimes when you make art. <laughs> <laughs> So our next sound effect story was from Mariana, and let me go ahead and play that. here and that was called happily ever after maybe it is, <laughs> I, I think that's what it was <laughs> yep. exactly. this is another one that i've just heard today uh, i hadn't found it last night um and and another great way of just using a, a few sounds to tell a, a story right so we had the banana peel which is quite clear what happened with that story and the invasion story and this one um it took me a, a couple of times to listen to it to try to figure out what the maybe was, but I think I get it. What do you think the maybe part is? I we're not sure if it if it really was okay or yeah. not, <laughs> and and it could be, um, but it might not be when that door opens up. Yeah. So she says at the end, "Thank God you're here," but mm, is is that person a good person? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And of course, you've got the ominous uh, wolf sound, I think it was. Oh, the howling dog, yeah. The howling howling dog, and the running, and the screaming, and things are not nice before that door opens, so, yeah. <laughs> could, could be somebody in disguise. Mm-hmm. You, you're really left at the end wondering what really could happen. And I imagine it would depend on your mood and where you're at when you listen to it. That's right, mm-hmm. because it's not clear. And that's what makes it such a nice story. There is no clear resolution, per se. You just have to decide, um, is the person who's running a bad person, or is that person going to save the person that they are you know, going to the door for? Um, and it is, in a way, undecidable. So it's going to have to be up to you. That's, that's one of the things I like about this. It seems to me there's a lot more ambiguousness to audio where your mm-hmm. mind gets the the listener becomes more involved with with it in interpreting what's being what you what you're hearing what's being communicated do you think so more than say in video i think so mm-hmm. yeah because you i mean you're picturing it in your mind yeah you don't mm-hmm. have the picture coming from somebody else. And there's a lot of interpretation in looking at a, at a picture as well. But mm-hmm. when you, the listener is, that's the, that's the only picture that's coming up. Right. We were talking earlier about the cultural references of the birds. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah. And someone may have a very different picture of what that actually means mm-hmm. than someone who's been watching Bugs Bunny or yes. what have you. <laughs> Okay, now we have another one of the um, assignments. This is from Kevin Hodgson. It's called A Life in Draft. Lines connected by swoop, connected by ideas. Words taking shape here in the rough. I tough it out to the point where vague echoes of old words form the canvas on which I write. Pencil marks leave traces, the words removed by erasers. The keyboard, next to nothing. Just pitch-perfect thoughts, 
Red under the illusion of flow. We riders know better though. Eraser marks, back key strokes, smudge frustrations, highlight, replace. We write, wrestling with our tools. Even this poem results from a war of my head and heart with the inside editor who finds fault, no matter what I write, or where, or with what. I really liked this one for a couple of reasons. One being that it shows that you can take these assignments and do uh, your own thing with them. You don't have to stick with, with what the, the rules are. That's one of the great things about DS-106 is that it's, it's open in that way. And um, what he's done is he's taken the sound effects uh, idea and attached it to a poem that he wrote, a poem which by itself is fantastic. Um, and you could just read it in the words and on the page, or he could have just read it in audio and maybe added some music and still would have been really good. But I think the sound effects amplify what he's saying in a really interesting way. So he's talking about um, writing and erasing and revising and starting over and the old words forming vague echoes uh, on the canvas on which he's writing. And of course, when you're writing with a pencil and erasing, that those pencil marks stay there, they're vague echoes. But then he talks about writing with a keyboard, and when you do your backstrokes or your deletes, there's very little. It leaves almost nothing, um, and all you get is this illusion of flow, you know, this illusion that it really just worked. Mm. But he says, then we writers know better, that, you know, there's, there's a ra racer marks, back keystrokes, I liked his words, smudged frustrations, um, that you may not see uh, if you just see, let's say, a typed version, right? And then the ending really struck me too. The inside editor always finds fault, no matter what I write, or with what. Um, and that's a yeah, that really resonates with me a lot. <laughs> so as as you're talking about this, I'm thinking about what just happened with us in terms <laughs> of the um, you don't see the outtakes. That's right. With with the back keys in, in the original stuff, you saw the outtake. You know, when you're writing. You see yeah. the eraser marks, but we can just cut things out, and we we did. We had to cut thing out. My my little dog Abby was scratching at the at the floor, and, uh, <laughs> like the writer on the on the pencil. Scratch, 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 scratch. Which in a way it kind of fit, but <laughs> yeah. I got distracted. That's okay. I started laughing. <laughs> and now we have one from Stephanie. Um, one of the things, again, I'll remind people is to, if, if it's okay for us to download it, you have to go to that special place to let us know that we can download it. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie's, at least last that we had seen, hadn't um, clicked on that little button. So we're just going to mm -hmm. play it directly from the air. Yes, 106. That's about yes, 106. Daddy creates, daddy creates, daddy creates, daddy creates, daddy crazy, 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 crazy. DS 106 radio, radio DS 106. DS 106 dot about dot us. DS 106 dot about dot us. DS 106. It's about DS-106. Create, create, create. DS-106. Create, create, create. So this one was um, really interesting for me because I saw this assignment last time I did DS-106 and I was scared of it. <laughs> because, <coughs> excuse me, um, I I wouldn't know what to say. Like a rap to me, I, I always think I have to say something interesting and you know complicated, or I don't know, make it rhyme. But she showed me that that you can do this in a in a very um, well. I don't want to say simple way because it, she actually says some really interesting things in here. But but it doesn't have to be scary and it doesn't have to be really complicated, right? Um, what, one of the things that she said that to me was very profound, and it really just came out again when I heard it this time, 
is that she says at one point, DS-106, it's about us. And, I, and in part, she's saying the website, DS-106.us, DS-106.us. But there's also a line in there where she says, it's about us, which of course is exactly what DS-106 is about. <laughs> And the, and the daily create, daily create, daily create, crazy, daily crazy, daily crazy. <laughs> I really loved that part. <laughs> um, so I, I just thought that, that she was diving into something that was new for her. She said she didn't really know that much about uh, raps. And she found um, music on Soundation, uh, the beat, which I had not heard of before. Foundation, um, well, it's foundation.com. It's just like it sounds. And then just came up with some some words and put it together and, and you know, tried a few times, but um, didn't worry too much about whether, you know, whether it was what it's supposed to be as a rap. She just did what she wanted to do. And I, and I thought it actually worked out really well. Okay. Let's go ahead and end it. Um, we had a daily create that was about uh, 30 seconds, give your philosophy. Hefa, her philosophy was. To me, philosophy is a discipline that uh, examines with scrutiny the very essence of things, from the abstract to the factual. Years ago, our teacher told us about an anecdote that happened during a national exam correction. In fact, one of the papers was blank. The students were asked to uh, explain what was carriage to them, and one student only wrote one sentence. Uh, it said, carriage was to write nothing, or carriage is to write nothing. And that student got the best grade for his answer. Luckily, his paper was corrected by philosophy teachers. There That's were, great. Uh, yeah. There were a bunch of um, uh, uh, submissions for this daily create, which I thought was really great because Brian Jackson is using it for his class. And uh, I'm going to use it for my class too, although I'm not asking, I have 100 students, I'm not asking them all to record uh, 30 seconds of their own views. I did ask them to blog their own views on philosophy at the beginning of the term, and I'll ask them to do it again at the end. Um, so I like the fact that, that Brian asked us to do this, and there were lots of submissions, which was wonderful, and many of them very, very good. And this one really struck me um, as a philosophy teacher <laughs> for, for some reason. Um, the idea that you would, you would get an exam that has one sentence on it, and that sentence is so full of meaning, and you, would, you, know, you could recognize that. It takes, it takes deep thinking to realize that, that that sentence itself can mean quite a bit, right? And you can say a lot in a very short way. Um, and perhaps you know other other people besides philosophy teachers might have might have given that person uh, a high mark as well. But um, to me, that does capture a lot of philosophy that that you have to really dig deep into what someone is saying, and it may look very simple on the surface, but it could actually mean something quite quite important. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. what we are the ones that we found. And if other people are listening that, you know, you've got some work that you've done, please, again, let us know. You know tweet it out or put it on the Google Plus so that we know what's going on. Just putting it in your blogs. Um, we did find, I think, Mikhail's we found by just searching <laughs> through Sally's. blogs. And Sally's, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just searching through blogs, but that's there's a lot of blogs for us to go through, so it really helps if they if you tweet it out, and then you'll get a chance to have comments, a lot more comments, when when we do it. Mm -hmm. do that yeah. Way. Okay. Any last words, Christina? I don't think so. Except I am so well. I'm so amazed at what people are able to do when they're just starting off. Uh, I'm so impressed with the the assignments that everyone's doing, whether it be audio or visual or other. It's, uh, yeah, uh, people are really putting in a lot of time and effort and having so much fun with this. Uh, and the audio assignments are really very good mm -hmm. this week. I'm, I'm so impressed with them. Mm -hmm. And I'm so envious that I haven't had time to do any myself yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I have appreciated people continuing to participate as we've gone into each. And I think I saw somebody new came in, uh, just maybe two people or something had come in that hadn't been doing much in the in the past and getting their first daily creates in, yes. starting to post. That's exciting. Um, mm-hmm. You can truly come in at any time, go out for a while, come back in. But, of course, we really like it to see your stuff watching <laughs> watching we what's yeah <laughs> we enjoy that yes we all have busy lives and we completely understand if it, mm-hmm. you know other things are are taking precedence that's what's happening with me right now well thank you very much christina this was this was nice yeah I had, thank you had fun Yeah.